Well, man, Kevin, you look, okay. It's gonna sound weird, but bro. I know you're like, this is bulking season. You look big. Thank you, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my whole thing was come out of this quarantine, like, boom. This guy was getting after it, you know? Hey, man, I'm, you're eating, what, like 17 meals a day right now? Something around there, 17, 18 meals. <laughs> I like to stay in that range, you know? No, you really do bring, like, like you eat lunch, and then you, you eat lunch at 11.30-ish, right? Yeah. And then you have, like, another meal, probably, like, 4.15-ish. Yeah. I, it's not that I'm, like, creeping on you. We're, we're most of the time the only two people <laughs> in the office. <laughs> so you just start to pick on all people's habits and systems. But, um, man, I, I'm really excited because we're doing another episode of... Um, Black and white insurance isn't always black and white, which is like, I feel like we were ahead of the curve as far as society and, and, and the social aspect of life goes right now. Um, but man, it's it's been what, like four months since we sat down and had a conversation? Yeah, it's been a long time. And, and we were kind of talking about that, like, uh, like, oh, it was challenging then, but there was an end in sight and all of this. And then it's like, whoa, this went way longer than anybody thought. Here yeah. we are, four months later, we're sitting in masks. We're not even next to each other. <laughs> we're all the way over here. And it's like, it's almost completely normal. And it's, there's no end in sight. It's yeah. kind of like, hey, maybe next year will be cool. I know, I mean, for me, when they were like, hey, um, COVID is happening. You know, we're gonna, things are gonna be different for a couple weeks. And I was like, all right, two weeks, we'll be, you know, back to whatever it is that we're doing. But um, that was like 18 weeks ago. And life has changed. Like, one of the things that I noticed about myself was um, like conversations have gotten heavier just due to social changes. Um, stress has gotten a little heavier. You know, getting onto an elevator has now become something that you think about. Yeah. And um, I was still moving at the same pace. So, you know, thankfully, like, we are essential business and insurance. And, like, things have continued to just pick up. Like, we're picking up new business. We, we have made some changes in the office. And, and it's been great. Um, but I felt like I was moving through life at the same pace with all of this extra pressure and all this extra weight on me. And what I, um, what I realized is it's like running... It's like running a, a 5K and you know your time, you know your, your splits, but running that same 5K with all the same variables, except for now you're wearing a weighted vest. Yeah. And at one point I got like so tired, like it was like July 4th weekend. I literally had to just sit down in my bed. I didn't, I didn't talk to anybody. I just said, I need to put everything that's on my plate. I need to put it down and I need to just kind of reflect, relax and, re and like get refreshed. Have you had like an experience or have you had like a moment where you felt like some of the stuff was just like, wow, too much? All the time. It's like every little thing is hard. Yeah. Everything. Going to the grocery store is harder. Yeah. You know, it, it, and when every little thing is harder, it's almost like, you know, you're spending more energy throughout your day. So at the end, you're exhausted. Your productivity is not the same. So it's like you're not feeling great about what you get done. Even though you're still getting a lot done, it's almost like you you want to be continuing to be capable of more and more. Right. And now it's like, hey, you know, I expected my output to be at a higher level than it was now as it continued to evolve as a broker or as an agent. But now I have all these other challenges I'm managing on the side and I can't put all of my mental energy into focusing on this. Right. I also have to focus about this pandemic. I also have all these other issues going on and it's like, man, what, what I ended up kind of gravitating towards and what you did too with all this time we've been in this office, I mean, most of the time, it's only been me and you in here. Mm -hmm. And it's all this focus on, on personal self-development. Yeah. And, and it's like, that's been a huge focus. And it's like, and what, what I thought was really cool is that we've finally had an opportunity to focus on how we can really get better as individuals to perform at a higher level yeah. because we have to. And it's like, now my reality is every transaction is harder. Everybody's on edge. Processing is slower. All our markets, everyone's working from home and you have to follow up three times as much to get anything done. Mm -hmm. Mistakes are being made because people are stressed out. Yeah. And 
you know, personally as an agent, you know, I have to manage and be responsible for everything. And it's just more and it's more and it's more. So it's like, okay, I have to increase my overall capacity. I have to be capable of more output. I need to have a more consistent mindset. I need to have stronger discipline. And you mentioned in the beginning of, of the podcast how, you know, I'm looking a little bigger. And what I, what I kind of took that is. is you look like, at swole. I'm looking swole, you know, but that's the whole point is, is that I want that to be a physical manifestation manifestation of what I'm doing in here. Yeah. It's because, right. yeah, you know, what, what I do to the body translates to the mind because that's discipline. So the fact that I'm improving, the fact that I'm getting better, the fact that I'm getting my numbers up, it, I want it to be an overall transcending event for me. And it's like, not only am I improving physically, but I'm improving spiritually, mental, mentally, function, my functioning, my like, the way I function at work is getting better, I'm more efficient. Yeah. You know, I, I'm reading more, I, I'm improving my, my language skills in Spanish. Like, and it's basically, I, I, wanna, I wanna get better everywhere at once because it's not just a, hey, I need to keep trying. It's like, almost like, hey, the world is more challenging. Yeah. So I need to evolve. And the way, easiest way for me to begin that was to do something that I'm already really good at and that I've been doing for a long time. And that was working out and getting big. And it was like, hey, I've been doing this for 10 years consistently. If I get momentum there, I expect it to transcend everywhere. Yeah. And it's almost just like a motivation because you start seeing yourself get better somewhere and you're like, hey, you know, like I have the capacity to improve. And that's motivating. The physicality portion of it, like I, I 100% agree with you on. You know, like I think, uh, like we both work out. You know, we're both like up for like you know swimsuit calendars and whatnot, whatever. But I think for me, and, and maybe you can speak to this as well. It's like a mental thing. Like it starts up here for me. And again, like there's been so many like good conversations. And I was just telling you this earlier. Like I felt so comfortable, like more comfortable than I, I have with most of my, my friends talking to you about, you know, like race relations and COVID and how I'm, I'm, I'm coping and, and working through the challenges that we have here at work um, around you, right? I'm, I'm around you a lot, which helps. But then with, um, with that in mind, it's, it's like your, your determination and your drive like it helps me it helps me to hold myself accountable to a higher standard. And when I see you getting after it and I see you coming in, like I'm like, all right, like I need to come in as well. Like I'll be completely honest. I don't know if you picked up on this, but you stay late pretty frequently. And I was like, I need to stay later than Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> like, real talk, I was like, Kev if, if Kevin is like where I like I'm trying to work myself up to and, and obviously like you're always improving, so like <laughs> I'm just trying to close the gap. But I always want to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can to try and learn or, or, or you know, I don't know what it is, like cut down the learning curve a little bit, yeah. but it all, it all starts up here. And it's like, if you don't have that drive or that will or that determination mentally, it's going to be hard to, you know, improve your physicality. It's going to be hard to get up out of bed and, and, and come in early, stay late. But um, for you, like, what do you think, like, your mental health is like during this season of life? I think my mental health, um, it's become something that, for me, I feel a sense of responsibility. And, and a lot of my motivation stems from me believing that I'm capable of certain things. Yeah. And what I've seen in a lot of people is that during difficult times in human history, certain people have to rise up mm -hmm. and take control, whether it be in leadership roles whether that be just doing your job and doing it well and being like, hey, I'm holding my line over here. Yeah. We're good, you know, and I can lend some strength to somebody else. And so just the fact that I'm able to come in here and hold the line, help people get coverage, help businesses stay open, help people close on their homes, help realtors make money, help bankers make money, help inspectors make money. And I'm doing my part to hold the line and get the deals closed and keep money flowing and keep the economy running and in some aspect, that keeps me going. And it's like, hey, I'm here holding the line. I'm here doing my job. And just because I can, because I'm young, because I'm strong, because I'm smart and I can do it. And it's my responsibility to do so. And you know, it's been tougher. I mean, you see me sometimes, like, I, I, I'm probably more stressed out than I used to be. I like, you know, I feel the heat, I feel the pressure, 
but it's like I didn't come into this game for it to be easy. I wanted a challenge, and now it's like this is challenging, <laughs> and, and and it's this is making me better. And when things are good, you know, I'm going to be tougher, and that's what's kind of keeping me going. But yeah, I mean, it 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 makes things definitely. I have to pay more attention to my state of mind now than I have in a long time. I need to be, mo it's, like, it's, like a, it's like a tea kettle. And it's like, hey, if I'm getting to that point, you know, I, I need to give myself a break here. Yeah. Or it's like, hey, you know what? I need to cut myself some slack there. Or, and, and I'm finding myself that it's just maybe something I need to monitor a little bit more, mm -hmm. but no matter how good you are, how strong you are, you're still a human being and you still have needs and you still have to take care of yourself. So what I found a good way to cope with all of that is just by spending time to think, studying, you know, philosophy in some sorts. Like I'm reading a lot of like Stoics, like Marcus Aurelius and those guys and Seneca. And those, I mean, Marcus Aurelius, for example, is emperor of Rome. What's a more stressful job than that? And all this guy thought about all day was how to master his emotions and master his mind. Wow. And it's like, wow, okay, thousands of years ago, you have the most powerful man on the planet, maybe ever, because who's ever stronger than the president of Rome, maybe, I mean, the emperor of Rome, rather than the president of the United States or something like that. And it's like, and what that guy focused on was conquering himself. So you have this guy, he's so high level, he's so smart, he's in charge of so much, and he still wakes up in the morning stressed out and is anxious and is like, hey, I gotta center myself, yep. and I gotta like focus, and I gotta, you know, not be insecure and anxious and, they're fighting the same demons we are every day selling insurance. Yeah, I think, I think so many people, and this, here's a hot take, so many people take care of their car, like they get it routinely checked up on, like they, they take it in for service, but they never routinely like check in with their, their mental health, their mind. Um, and it's, it's the thing that literally works nonstop. Like even when you're sleeping, your brain is still working and, and you need to like find a way to, to break, like to, Take a break before it breaks down. And for me, like I'm so, I've had to like, I've had to like reflect and, and check in on myself. And I mean, I have like some really, really great friends, you included, that have like checked in on me to make sure that I'm good. But um, like with, with everything going on in the world, you know, like, I mean, I, clearly um, I've, I've felt, I felt a lot of the pressure. I felt a lot of the stress. Um, not even with like with work like let's put that to the side for a second just with you know social injustices um i can i can i'll be very very transparent like i've been in a lot of the situations and in scenarios that some of these these uh, african-american men have died doing um i've been in those spaces i've been doing some of those things and for those guys to not be here with us today like that makes me um first and foremost count my blessings but secondly um, it makes me a high awareness of like, how does the world perceive me? And when I'm thinking about how does the world perceive me, I'm not looking for uh, validation from anyone. I'm just looking for um, equality from people. And um, just kind of like, I don't know where I'm going with that, but really and truly like it, it's something that's now brought to the forefront. And um, I believe inherently that all lives matter, but I believe right now because black lives are the thing that the news and the media and that social media um, and that it, it's, it's something that like we really, really need to focus on. Like I remember I could, the, the day I got my driver's license, right? I got pulled over. The next day I had my driver's license, I got pulled over. And not everyone walks away from those encounters. And because like that's something that I have to think about, like and then come to work and put on a brave face, you know I have to make sure that I'm still hitting hitting my my goals, making sure that I meet my deadlines, like that's something that you know like not everyone has to deal with, but again like I felt all of this weight coming on to me and me having to still move at that pace. But um, again like. I appreciate the conversations that you and I have had in the office. I appreciate the conversations that I've had with some of the, the principals. And it's it's just refreshing to be able to like just talk about it. Like yeah. and and I got some messed up, crazy, wacky things going on up here. And so if I can talk it out and I can walk through it and, and, and process it with people, like that's what really helps me. 
Like I'm a, I'm a visual thinker. And so like, I will give you illustration upon illustration, but like I, I need something, like I need a soundboard to bounce that off of. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm glad you brought that up too. It's because a lot of times like talking about like breaking points, yeah. it's never one thing. Right. It's a bunch of things. And it's you're dealing with a problem here, a problem there, a problem there, a problem here. And for a long time, it was just me and you in this office. Mm -hmm. And when it was just me and you in this office, we we're at the height of COVID. Yeah. We we're at the height of, of everything going on with the social injustices, the protests, Black Lives Matter movement, and, and which was a huge deal as well. And then on top of that, we have stressful jobs and we we're kind of in this fight together. And we did spend a lot of nights here talking and really kind of having heart-to-hearts about this. And I remember thinking, man, I, I was like, I was like, look, like this, I mean, this sucks yeah. that this is happening. And at the same time, it was almost like for me to sit here with you in this office and be like, this is affecting you more than it's affecting me. What I thought was, I want to come in here and I want to be strong and I want to get after it and I'm going to show you that, hey, man, you're not going to be, I'm not going to let you sit in this office and fight alone. You know, and it's like, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna try and set an example. You learn from producers, because yeah. that's where you're gonna go. Yeah. So if I can show up and, and I can work hard and grind, it made me work harder. Cause it, cause it was just like, hey man, like we're a team. We're in here together getting after it. Yeah. You know, and I saw you still getting after it. And, and, and of course everything going on affected you a lot on top of the quarantine, on top of COVID, on top of a stressful job and dealing with crazy clients in this crazy climate. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, on top of that, like we both still gotta be here, man. And it was just like, I don't know, I felt like we hit a really strong groove where we were in here getting after it, acting like a team. And that was, it was a pretty cool experience, you know, and I learned a lot and it was, um, and I fed on your strength too, to kind of be like, hey man, like, I don't have an excuse right now not to be giving it my all, you know? Yeah. And, and that, was, that was just pretty much it. And it was just, uh, I thought that was, that was a pretty interesting thing that I'm not really ever going to forget, you know? No, man, I appreciate that. I think, yeah, I think with you and I, we've, we've definitely gone into a, a new level of our relationship, um, professionally and personally, because we have these difficult conversations, right? And, and not always do these conversations have to be conflicting for you to grow from them, um, but if you have a difficult conversation, like you're gonna, you're gonna grow because of it. And those, like these hot topic conversations, these things that people don't, like the elephants in the room that people don't want to address, by addressing them, um, you're not saying that like you have to, you're not saying that you have to um, like hide it. And when you like remove, like when you remove, I guess the candelabra, like you see things for what they truly are. And, and I, I'm, I'm getting to see Kevin for who you truly are. Not just a guy, literally, not a guy behind the mask. <laughs> <laughs> you know We're all the guy behind the mask right now, man. <laughs> yeah. um, but I'm really, I'm really excited for like where we're going. And I know that like this isn't just a job for you and I, this is a career path. And this is something that's gonna change the trajectory of, of our, our families. And one day we're gonna look back on the first half of 2020 and we're gonna be like, man, we, we grew because of this. Um, we were forced to grow in areas and, and we trued up some of our weaknesses and we did it together. Yeah. Like if you wanna go, I say this all the time, if you wanna go fast, you go alone. If you wanna go far, you go together. And um, you already know like, I'm, I, one day I wanna have one of these corner offices right next to you um, and then still be competing with you trying to kick your tail every day. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> That's why we're here. And, and we both kind of share this experience where it's like, with this office empty and so many mentors kind of not here necessarily, like, yeah, they're here, they're by phone, but it's different. When you're not sitting around everybody in the bullpen with the owners and everyone around, it's like, we've had to figure a lot of stuff out on our own. Oh, yeah. And having to figure out these things on our own, it's exhausting, it's stressful, but you really learn better, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. because you have to understand what you're doing. It's not someone telling you, hey, do this because that's the way you do it. It's you figuring out why you're doing it the way you're doing it, yeah. and then you're doing it, yeah. and then you know why you're doing it. Yeah, because you, you want to understand, and the best, like, 
I don't ever want people to like really throw their kids in the deep end, but like I got thrown into the deep end as a child and you're either gonna sink or you're gonna swim. Shocker, I'm here, so I learned how to swim. Yeah. But this is, this is it, right? Like this is life. You either, you either wanna continue to just stay at the level that you're at and you plateau there or you can choose to grow. And although you know, we have many, many obstacles that we never thought were gonna be there, we have to continue to overcome those obstacles and you learn the lesson by overcoming everything that you go through. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's, uh, it's definitely true. And then when you look at the bright side of things too, it's, you know, the improvements you make to yourself yeah. during difficult times, oh, yeah. they don't go away when the difficult times end. Yeah. You remain that strong. And when things are easy, you're still that guy that can serve, that can weather a difficult storm. That's another tool in the tool belt, as, as my dad would probably say. Exactly, man. You're that much better for it. You grow out of necessity, but then it stays when it's not needed. And it's almost like a, a warrior in the garden is better than a gardener in the war. <laughs> that's a mic drop moment. I've never heard that. Exactly. I'm, like, I'm going to adopt that one. So right now, we're warriors at war, but the goal is to be the warrior in the garden, man. I just want to come up with another line, and I've, so I'm going to say something. <laughs> You never seen a cheetah stretch. Always <laughs> right, <laughs> I can't not have a line after that. Kevin just dropped that super line, bro.